Um. Why is the sky red? What did I do? What did I do? Um. I think. Who? What the hell? What was that? What are these obelisks? That's a triangle. They've made a triangle in it. No. Oh sh! <laughs> oh. Well, Are you supposed to be out of the booth. I'm getting back in the booth. So hello everyone and welcome back to yet another episode of Renegades React and once again joining us from beyond the the great coffee shop in the sky is you know, we have Micah. You know, he's back again, once again, you know, to bless us with his presence and uh, you know, make all the ladies out there very happy, uh, especially especially a lot of the the you know, the church-going mothers who uh, have a strange Jesus fantasy for some reason. What? It's that story that you told me back in the day. Remember that one woman when you played Jesus in the play and everything and she I, was like obsessed with you? I've never played Jesus in a play. Really? No. They, or, did, or did they try and make you play we, Jesus? We joked about renting me out for church plays at a place I worked. Um, and then my buddy's, uh, my buddy's aunt had a big crush on me ah uh, okay yeah we're we're uh <clears throat> kind of combining several different stories there i think okay i think that's the i think I, that's the i have never portrayed our lord and savior in theatrical format <laughs> okay yet. okay yet um, oh gosh jim caviezel i am not well, speaking of Jim Caviezel, how about that new movie that he just came out with? Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but my buddy really wants to. And... Sound of Freedom, and honestly, a lot of people love it, dude. Uh, I, people have been saying it's great. I mean, dude, it, it's it been shown in 2,000 less theaters and still beat Indiana Jones at the box office. I think that's kind of hilarious. If that doesn't say something, I don't know what does. Oh, and also, there was a funny meme going around. It's just like... It's like finally something that both sides can agree on. Child like child endangerment and like child uh you know uh, you know trafficking is bad. And then it's like mainstream Hollywood coming up behind you trying to drag you away from it. I it's like <laughs> <clears throat> just more evidence to what I have believed for a long time now. Yeah, burn it down. Yeah. Let it let it burn. Let let Hollywood like collapse under the weight of its own of its own stupidity. I mean that's that's what I've been advocating for forever, and mm. it looks like it's happening. Just gonna get a big old wood chipper and then just you know on the little, you know in the inside just put chomos only. Oh gosh, uh, you know actually I had a funny thing about it's just like you know like the punishment for people of that nature. It's like you get they're lined up at the wood chipper and it's just like, all right, head first or feet first. Um, head first because I I think it'll hurt less. Like, all right, feet first. Speaking of child, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> the Disney Channel. <laughs> oh God, this is this is awful. I, I I mean, say what you will. I mean, given everything that they've done to all their like Dude, stars and starlets in the at, past, look at every pop star has come out of the Mickey Mouse Club. And how their life has spiraled out of control. Oh yeah, I mean, look at, dude. You you don't think that Disney Company has sexualized children for profit? Like, oh, they have immensely, and they did it for so long, and it was during our generation where it peaked, and it's just like, no, this no. this isn't going to stand anymore. What are you doing? We aren't here to talk about any of that right now, but in, well, actually, maybe we are because there's a controversy surrounding like some of the nicknames for. Uh, Okay, so Primos is a show that Disney is producing. So Primos is, you know, Spanish for cousins. Whenever you say, hey, Primos, it's like basically like, hey, cut, or, or Primo, that's cousin. Or that's, it's like, hey, cuz, and then Primos is cousins. So I want you to like really take that into account. If this show is only called Primo and not Primos, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think the controversy surrounding this show would not have been as high because of a little grammatical kerfuffle by the people who made this show. So anyway, let's just go ahead and check it out. This is the Primo's theme song on the Disney Channel. Here we go.
There it is. Yeah, so here's the thing. There's there's several big things that are a bit are a bit of a problem. So terremoto translates to earthquake. Earthquake heights. Okay. In East LA. So uh, a little funny like tongue in cheek joke. So there were people who pointed out it's just like, well given the amount of people who've died from like earthquakes, I mean it's kind of it, I think it's a funny little in you know, tongue in cheek joke. To me that doesn't bother me. And then there's, you know, right here, when she yells, Oye Primos. Here's the problem with that. Oye is the singular notion. Mm -hmm. So thus, that's why I said, if this show is just called Primo, it would, like, the whole thing. But the Latino community basically saw this and was just like, uh, no. Because this is, like, right here. Oye Primos. Mm -hmm. Like, that's their big problem right there. And they basically have just come out and said, yeah, this is, yeah, like, there's just grammatical errors here and there, and it's all over the place. And then the other one that really caused a lot of controversy, the little kid here, mm -hmm. uh, Coquita, which translates uh, in, like, regular Spanish to, like, you know, Castellan Spanish to, like, kitty, like, little kitty. Mm -hmm. But in Mexican Spanish, which is what this is, Portraying is you know is like set the story set in. Coquita means pussy. Okay. Yes. I yeah the first one the grammatical issue it's like okay that's just done in poor taste but that yeah that that's like pretty bad one. yeah <laughs> and and also it's just like it, and there's a bunch of other errors that you know like other channels on youtube have talked about and everything so did do they not have a single like native spanish speaker that works for them that they could like well that's the thing natasha natasha klein the one who, the woman who created this uh -huh. she's half she's half, half hispanic her dad's white her mom's her mom's hispanic does she speak spanish Apparently, but uh, it's but you know if she let that pass as the opening theme. I would say more than likely she speak she doesn't speak Spanish natively. She speaks it you know cat you know she speaks it casually. I guess I don't know, but I can forgive the grammatical error you know for Oye Primos because it's just like you know a lack of understanding of just like like a full grasp of the Spanish language. Yeah, just hire a native Spanish speaker to like run this stuff. Well, specifically a Mexican Spanish speaker yeah. because, you know, Castellan Spanish and like heck, Puerto Rican Spanish and uh, you know, um, like Mexican Spanish, it's like completely different across the board. There's different pronunciations, there's different uh, there's different meanings to different words and stuff like that. It's just like my like, like Rick is from uh, Rick is from Puerto Rico. Or his family's from Puerto, Puerto Rico, and the you know Puerto Rico and Cuba, and the dialects on those two are pretty much the same because you know they're both island nations in the middle of the Caribbean, so their dialects are similar like most of the way through, but for the most part, it's uh, you know it's uh, you know there's not as much difference. But if you go to Mexico and you say some of the stuff that you would say in Puerto Rico, you might offend some people. So I guess is the implication that this is just sort of virtue signaling and these people don't really know anything about Mexican culture and they're just producing this to try and gain an audience that they don't actually represent? Is that kind of the accusation? Or yeah, that's the accusation, mostly. And here's the thing. If Disney would have never, or, you know, and the people involved would have never said anything else relative to this... And would have just been said. Would have just said. Well, the grammatical errors will make sense once you watch the show. And it's just like if they would have just said that. But instead, one of the actresses decided to go on a little bit of a of a rampage on social media. <laughs> well done, by the way. And she basically like shit on anyone who used the Spanish language. And basically was just like just like the Spanish language is not a Latin American language. It's a language the Spanish conquistadors 
forced upon Latin American people. The only reason we're Latin people and not Native American people is because of that distinction. So be mad at me all you want for misspelling words in Spanish. Be mad at me all you want for mispronouncing words in Spanish. That doesn't take away from the fact that I am a Mexican-American, Native American woman. And I'm just sitting here, I'm like, you do realize that the ancestry is so crossed over and mixed up now that it doesn't matter. It, 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 it's just like here in the states. There, there are no like true white people anymore. There, there, like, in terms of like in the United States, there are no like because everyone's mixed up. Everyone like no one is a hundred percent anything. I mean, hell, you, like when I did my genealogy test, I, I I didn't believe it, so I did another one, and the second one said the exact same thing. It's just like all across the board. It's just like. Mostly I'm Caucasian, yes, that's the predominant thing, 64%, well, 63 to 64%, depending on which test, you know, I want to go by. I just say 64% because, you know, Nintendo 64, you know, 64 is a more, a more round number. But anyway, 64%, and then of course after that, it's, uh, you know, it's like 19 to 20% American Indian, you know, Cherokee, uh, Blackfoot, and uh, Powhatan. And then after that is also uh, also uh, the the one that blew me away was the fact that I'm seven percent black. <laughs> I was just like, what? Really? <laughs> no freaking way! And I looked at like my ancestry is from like uh, Senegal and Cameroon on the on West Africa, and uh, like uh, on East Africa, Ethiopia. Yeah. So a little bit of East Africa, a little bit of West Africa, and uh, then another one that blew me away. 2% Polynesian. Uh, apparently I'm 2% Tongan. Oh, which is cool. which is weird. I'm like I'm like how the hell do I get 2% Tongan? Like where'd that come from? <laughs> this right here, I'm not sure. Like Na like Natasha Klein has gone on to say like she did a little bit better with it by saying like oh like we want like we're portraying this as like someone who grew up in two different cultures. So there's going to be a little misunderstanding with the with the language and everything. So it's like okay. And it's just, I'm afraid that this show's gonna be dead on arrival once it, uh... I mean, once you can it... say that, but when it's, like, your intro for every episode, I... I don't know. I feel, I feel like they just kind of missed the boat there, and now they're just trying to make something that sounds good to keep people from just I guess. showing up to this. I guess, but this show's basically, for most people out there, is dead on arrival. Sure. I mean, I didn't even know it existed until... Until I just showed ago, you. Yeah, so, uh, and honestly, for whatever the controversy is worth, I still don't care about it. I don't either. I mean, honestly, I just thought it was interesting. Like, all, There's actually a hilarious parody version uh, of this. It's called Oye Gringo. It's like, Oye Gringo, why are you fucking up my shit? Oye Gringo. I mean, that's kind of the feeling after you've described to me. It, it feels like this person just doesn't understand Mexican Spanish and is just trying to cash in on an audience that they are trying to pander to, but they just kind of fail because yeah. you don't actually know your audience. Uh, let's see, Natasha Klein. Okay, there she is. Yeah. Yeah, she's half Latina, but at the same time, it's just like I, she's like I forget who I forget which actress it was that basically screwed up like screwed up like any hope of recovering recovering uh, from this because of like she was on there and she was like trying to play the victim and everything, but yet she had such a condescending attitude that she, it felt like it felt like one of those spoiled ass white girls that you see at Starbucks complaining to the barista that they didn't put enough foam or you know like frothed milk in her latte i mean the ratio is pretty bad you got 266k yeah. dislikes and only 12k <laughs> likes yeah look at that look at that ratio yeah of course comments are turned off of course well the, well it is youtube kids youtube yeah. kids doesn't allow comments I'm I'm sure they would have actually learned some real Mexican Spanish if they left the comments turned on. <laughs> It'd probably be a shit ton of Latinos down there just being Latinos and Latinas just basically just being just being like you fucking our shit up. Stop it. I so I from what I've seen Latinos do not like culture pandering. No, they don't. 
they they really dislike well, it. Well, they're able to spot it really easily, and they're able to basically just be like, we don't like being pandered to. Well, like, we appreciate when people, like, like, appreciate our culture and everything, but we don't like it whenever, you know, big companies decide, like, oh, hey, we want to appeal to the, to the, to the Mexican audience, so... Let's uh, let's pump out a show, and, uh, and it's just like that one movie about like the flaming hot Cheetos. Have you seen that? Yeah, they they tried to release a movie about the flaming hot Cheetos. Let's see, and they basically tried to pass it off as just like, oh yeah, the inventor of the flaming hot Cheetos, Richard Montanez, uh, an American businessman. He was hired by Frito Lay's. And he's best known for his claim of inventing flaming hot Cheetos, which is disputed by Frito Lay and other employees, uh, and nobody really knows. Uh, nobody really knows, like, who, like, invented the Flamin' Hot Cheetos, but he said, I did it for the Latino community, and then I forget, like, it was, was it Amazon? It's, it has to be, like, oh, it was Disney, go figure. It was, uh, Disney basically latched onto it and said, hey, Latinos, you see, we care. It's like... Directed by Ava Longoria. Yeah, that's another thing, too. And... I didn't even know this existed. Yeah, it's. I've seen a little bit of it, and it could be it could be something interesting and could be funny. But there's a lot of people out there who say that, and not just like you know corporate speak from a lot of people at Frito Lay's and like former employees and like people who knew uh, Richard Montanez, but a lot of people are just like, yeah, he was integral in like getting it out there in the Latino community, but he didn't invent it. And which, that's nothing to sneeze at. I mean, you know, he was a successful businessman. And he did great work for the Frito-Lay's company. But claiming that he invented it, that's a bit much, don't you think? I mean, at least I think so. Just figured I would let Micah know about the Primo's controversy. And, uh, yeah, we're a little late to the party on this. But I figured, like, enough time for the dust to settle so that we don't wind up getting overrun by just a bunch of people in the comments section, you know, just shitting on our opinion for you know it's like it's like and who are you to have an opinion about this uh, a living human a living breathing human being who is allowed to be a free thinker I mean isn't that what we're supposed to do I I mean after the, after this video is over I'm not going to devote any amount of processing power to that I will probably forget Primos exists fair enough tomorrow fair <laughs> enough that's more than fair so that's gonna do it so until next time I'm Nate Micah. And this is Ashy Boy. Well, Sleepy Ashy Boy. He had a long day. And uh, I guess we'll see you in the next one. Peace.